Hello, my name is Arne Gilman. I am an IBM Senior Consulting IT Specialist out of New York. Today I'm going to give you a live demo of an exciting new Omegamon Navigator view. This new view provides best practices for monitoring ZOS networks and applications through Omegamon for mainframe networks. And best of all, customers do not have to build these views themselves since they can be dynamically imported. This demo uses our IBM Demo MVS systems out of Austin, Texas. Let's start the demo, so starting with the default view that you get when you bring up the Enterprise Portal. Here we see the our Demo MVS system, and let's take a quick look at what it looks like by looking at the self-monitoring topology view. And here we'll see all the different LPARs in our environment. So let's uh, maximize that and look at that. And here you see the Tilly Enterprise Portal. That's what I'm connected into today. This is the management server, the Thames the hub Thames in this case, and that's running on ZOS, and we have two other LPARs here, MVS3, MVS2, and MVS1. And so that's the environment that we're going to be running on out of Boston, Texas. Okay. Now, to start the demo, we are first need to take a look at our Navigator view, and the first thing we need to do is make sure that we can view it. So I'm logged on here, and if we look at the Navigator views, you can see if it wasn't on my list, I would have to go over to the Valid Blues and assign it, but as you can see it. So let's go ahead and switch to the Network Extended view. And this is the default view that you would get out of the box with showing all the different LPARs uh, and the IP stacks. And notice we highlight different air conditions such as discards, retransmissions, uh, this could be possibly denial denial of service attack if these, some of these numbers are really high or you have some congestion. And at the top, we're looking at the number of TCP IP connections, which is the bar, and then I overlay that with the number of byte rates. And hopefully you would see some type of correlation uh, between the two. Sometimes you might have a very high byte rate with just a few connections. And let's start off with a, a view that we've seen, a lot of customers have seen, in terms of problems in the environment, and, and this was one that you have an issue where you have bytes backing up, either inbound and outbound. Now, I've actually had a couple customers who this actually took the whole LPAR down. If the application starts receiving data, and let's say it doesn't re wait re for a response, for example, an application might be Connect Direct or NDM, as, they, as it used to be called. Uh, here we're seeing that the top two applications showing a, a large number of inbound buffers, that are backing up to the application, but you can see the application is still uh, running here. You see a byte rate. This might be a case where maybe I want a situation if it starts getting backed up in terms of gigabytes and maybe even drop the connection. So that would be a case where that I, protect, I could protect the system. And you can see I've got also some a whole bunch of bytes backing up with uh, um, connections that are in closed weight. And so in those cases, these might be sitting around forever. See, these have been sitting around for a long time. So maybe I want to go ahead and just drop these and so forth. Now I can issue commands right from the interface. So I can just right click and do a ping, make sure I can read, look at these environments, see if it's responsive. And you can see I can just continue to issue those. I could do a trace route, look at the performance of this, see if, how many hops I'm going through. Sometimes I might have a firewall that prevents me from doing this. Okay, so, and if it gets really bad, I can go ahead and just drop the connection which I'm not going to do in this case, but it, uh, this could, would be authorized through the through a SAP call in this case. So let's look at, uh, so this is actually a cross LPAR view showing me all connections across all LPARs that have bytes backing up either inbound or not phone. So it's quite a valuable view that I would have here. Another interesting view that we've created out of the box is connections backlog or rejected. This is something that we, customer at Bank of America discovered in terms of finding out connections were being rejected. The interesting thing about this one, application is not notified. So basically, it's one of these symptomless problems. The user tries to log on, and maybe it fails. Uh, what, as you can see here, you've got the backlog limit, and this is typically set by the, the application itself, or TCP IP profile can set that. And you can see... We've, if you exceed that backlog limit, which is the number of queued connections, they'll start getting rejected. And you can see we had a couple connections on, in this case, a Megamon at uh, this time. And then we had a CICS rejection. We had more than seven, see, we had 768 connections backed up, and we exceeded that by 32 connections got rejected also. That probably occurred at the IPL time. 
So again, you could have, uh, these were batch jobs, this could be a serious issue, which the batch jobs fail, nobody knows why they fail, it could be that they all, all the logons occurred at once. Again, this is an important thing to monitor, and if you want to go ahead and you want to send this to somebody, you can just right-click, export it, and then you you can go ahead and the connection is being rejected, say that. Uh, look at my OS Express here. Look, if you look at the OS Express, you can see I have a little topology view that I created, so you can see how these things connected to these different L powers, and these are the OS Express ports. And you can see as, as I put my mouse over these, you can see the little pop-ups of some of the statistics and bytes received, send utilization, and so forth. And then, if you prefer, you got the table views at the bottom. And uh, you can see that, again, you've got the uh, this guy that's occurring. And you also have with ZOS 112, if you look expand that, you can actually see things like the different priority for the outbound. You can see that we see the hyper sockets. Uh, and again, you can see if there's problems with uh, things backing up in terms of uh, uh, what's going on. And also, if do I have enough buffers dedicated for the EOS Express? Again, these are the capabilities that I have that can help me manage my OS Express. I have the same type of thing for Enterprise Extender and HPR. Again, we've got a little topology for all the uh, OS CP names. And my, uh, you can see I've got uh, my little topology here, and then you can see I've got some congestion going on. This is ARB mode red, which can mean I've got some congestions at the other points. And here we've got discards occurring here. Some of the other things I can look at the connections with high response times. Again, these are all cross LPAR views. And here you're seeing I've got some TN3270 connections here. You can see these are uh, uh, these are terms of tens of seconds here. So you've got some of these are very high. And then in the same row, I could see, well, the, maybe it's high because I've got a lot of duplicate X occurring. I could have retries occurring and so forth. So I have everything here to figure out is it a... Uh, networking here or not. And I put a little graph at the top here to see uh, the response time, which is the line, and I overlaid that with duplicate acts and retransmissions. And you can see if there's a correlation between the two. You can see there's a high number of uh, seconds retransmitted, so that might be the case here. But the others look all, all right. And again, I can right click on the connection, and I can do a trace route or ping. So I don't have to write it down, and you can see it will go out. Uh, and see that, see the results. Let's look at something else I might have is maybe I want to go ahead and I want to look at, someone calls up with an IP address. And then you can see that's the remote address that I did the search on. You can see all the different L powers that I have connections for. And you can see they're established. You can see the response times. And this is quite powerful. Powerful. You can see that end users logged on different applications. And then I can go ahead and drill down and look at that application. Basically, it's my application view. And here you see the uh, number of listeners that are using here. And you notice I've got some, again, I've got some. Uh, Connection rejections. I've got a couple active connections. And, uh, let's go ahead and select one that might have some interesting data on it. Application here. Again, here's my listener, and you can see if I got a, I've got two active connections, and there they are. My little topology view of showing the two connections. I can look at the last ten. If I have a net view and it's enabled, I'll show the last ten connections for that application, and you can see I can see. If there's a thrashing condition occurring or something, or something like that, I would see that. This is for that application, and you can see different app IP addresses that they're connected to. And then finally, at the bottom again, you've got the Mega Mountain Z West statistics that you have. Uh, maybe the problem is a uh, problem at the endpoint. I've also got high uh, TN3270 response times, and you can see this. One of the things that this that you have with the out of the box views is the put filters on it to, own, to filter out connections that don't have any traffic on it. So I use my own filters in there so I can find, I want to have some response time issues. And here you can see the, uh, again, the yellow is the average IP response time, the blue is the non response time. Typically that's going to be the application versus the IP time. And then you have the bucket. This is the sliding windows of 
similar to the old RTM buckets, and you can see the number of times some of the responses, end user responses, are uh, taking a long time. And of course, you've got the if there's an active connection, then I can drill down from the TU 270 to the TCP IP connection that uh, it's going over. And you, again, you can go ahead and look at this and see if there's some issues with that, such as retries, uh, retransmissions, and so forth. So in this case, I didn't have any. And then by, finally, you have I can look at my buffers. If, so basically, I can see if there's problems with ESA usage. Oh, I've got problems with my buffer pools, the CSM storage, the TCP IP buffers, and so forth. Normally, I would create some situations if this was a problem, but if I do have suspect that, I, what I did put all the L powers for all the buffer pools on one screen, and then you can go and see if any of them have any issues. And then uh, connection rate problems. I don't think I have any here, but if I had uh, an application, I have two. So let's say if I have a connection rate of several hundred connections per minute, but you had no active connections, it could be that the connections are persistent. This could indicate a poor application design, where they, they should be keep leaving the connection up rather than logging on, logging off, logging on, logging off for each query, for example, which can be a lot of overhead in some environments. The zombie, I don't think I have any because I just, I, oh, I do have some. These are connections that are uh, had no activity for, in this case, more than two days. And you could filter these out. But again, these are, they could be, you know, they could be tying up. Oh, this would be a problem if you have a lot of these. If you've got thousands of the connections and, and uh, they're sitting around and, they sh and the application's got a problem where they're not being dropped, maybe you need to investigate this further. And I call these zombies where the basic connections are not being uh, just sitting around with no activities. Okay, in some cases they're okay, but in many cases it's an issue and you may want to go ahead and you just go in here, maybe you want to go ahead and, like I said, you can just go ahead and drop these. Okay, or uh, do find out where these are located. Do an NS lookup maybe and find out where these are located. And this one doesn't have any lookup. And then finally I could, I can look at the health of my management network and see if I've configured it correctly. So if any of the windows are blank or whatever, I can look in here and say, okay, I didn't configure TCP IP collection or SNA collection or the uh, not collecting the the, um, the storage or VTM buffers and so forth. And the same thing is true. Maybe I'm not getting my FTP data. Okay. For FTP data, I actually have a workspace to show me all FTPs across all the all powers and let's see if we have, I don't know if we have any here. Well, we have some, as you can see here, I've got, I had an FTP that lasted so much time. Here's the, here's the last command issued. And you notice I'll show you the data set name and the size of the file. And I actually, so you have a lot of information. If you had any fit, active ones, they'll show up here. And you can see the logon failures, which is a common problem. Here you have a password, which is not valid, coming from different applications. It looks like it's on a regular basis. It's the same application over and over again. It could be a batch job that with a hard-coded FTP. And again, I can go ahead and maybe export that and send it to the owner to say, hey, you've got a problem with your password in your batch job. So that's the end of the demo. But again, you can uh, just navigate a view. I have a write-up on how to uh, import these. Again, this my name is Ernie Gilman. Thank you very much.